Lynette from CleverlySimple.com and today we're going to be making delicious homemade pie crust. You are not going to believe how easy it is to make your own pie crust for whatever pie you're making. This recipe freezes really well so you can make it ahead of time and if you've never made pie crust, this is the best recipe you'll ever have and you'll be so glad you followed along with me. Welcome to my farmhouse. Okay, this recipe for pie crust is super simple to pull together. And I know a lot of people get intimidated by pie crust. I get it. But you guys, it is so easy with a recipe like this. This is my great grandma's pie crust recipe. I make it for every pie. And if you know me personally, you know how good the pies are. It's not that I'm this phenomenal baker. It's that I have great recipes and I'm sharing them with you. And it starts with this pie crust today. So first thing we're gonna do is we need four cups of flour. This recipe makes two pie crusts, which is great because it freezes well. You can stick one in the freezer if you're making a pie today, or if you're like me, I'm actually using these pie crusts for a month from now at Thanksgiving, so I'm gonna stick them in the freezer and they'll do great there until I need them. Then I'll have to make the filling. It makes it so much easier during the holiday season. So I have three cups in here already, so you didn't have to watch me measuring flour, but I wanna measure this last cup because if you've watched any of my other recipe videos, you know how passionate I am about how you measure your flour because a lot of those very popular food shows, they just show people dipping their measuring cup into the flour and that is not the correct way to measure. And if you do it that way, you're gonna end up with too much flour in your recipe and that leads to failed recipes. So make sure you let your flour aerate by spooning it into the measuring cup, level it off, and then add it to your bowl. So to these four cups, I'm gonna add a heaping tablespoon of sugar. And what heaping means is I'm just gonna let it pile as high as it wants. And then a level teaspoon of salt. And then we're just gonna give that a stir just to kind of incorporate the salt, the sugar, and the flour. Okay, to this I'm gonna add a cup and a half of shortening. This recipe uses shortening. That's just how my grandma made it. So I'm going to get it out of the refrigerator because I want to make sure that it is nice and cold when I add it to this recipe. Okay, I got from my refrigerator a cup and a half of shortening. I love using these shortening sticks because it makes it so much easier. I'm gonna use my pastry cutter or pastry blender, however you wanna call it, to cut in the shortening to the flour. Now the reason I want it cold is that's what helps make this flaky, but honestly you guys, I have before forgotten to add the Crisco or the shortening to the refrigerator. It's okay, it's just much easier to cut it in if it's colder, um, and I also have like added it to the freezer for like 15 or 20 minutes just to kind of get it cold. It's just gonna make it a lot easier to incorporate it. Now, if you don't have a pastry blender or a pastry cutter, you can use two knives. Um, I have totally done that before when I am without a pastry blender. This pastry blender just makes it easier. Now, I know some people use food processors, but honestly, I love not getting out any other equipment. Like this goes in my dishwasher. So. You'll know that you're about done using your pastry blender when it kind of feels like everything is kind of starting to like form one big, very dry dough. And when I reach that point, then I know I can stop blending. Now to this, I'm going to get all that goodness out of there. Add a half cup of cold water. Now I pre-measured this and then I added two ice cubes so it's a little more than I need, so I'm gonna dump a little bit of it. But to this half cup of cold water, I'm gonna add vinegar and egg. I went and got my egg from the refrigerator so that it's nice and cold as well. I add that to my half cup of cold water and then I add one tablespoon of vinegar. Now, I don't know about the vinegar. I don't know why, that's how great grandma always did it, but it seems to really break up the egg into the water. I don't know, it works. And why question what great grandma did when what great grandma did makes a delicious, flaky, easy to make pie crust, right? Okay. So all I'm gonna do is take that half cup of water with the egg and vinegar, and I'm just gonna use my fork, and this will all come together 
to form our dough that we are then going to roll out. It is that simple, you guys. You don't need fancy ingredients. You don't need a lot of ingredients. All you need is water, egg, vinegar, flour, and Crisco, salt, and sugar. These are basic ingredients you probably have on hand right now, and it is going to make a delicious pie crust. Now, one adaptation you can make, I've had people ask me about using pastry flour. Yes, you can use pastry flour. I find that the perfect, I mean, I usually always use all purpose because let's be honest, that's just easier, it's what I have on hand, but I find that using half pastry flour and half regular all-purpose flour is the best combination. All right, you can see how nice and soft this dough is. It's so easy to pull this together. We're gonna roll this out and get it into our pie plates. So I have my baking mat and I've got it floured. You don't have to have a baking mat, but I'll leave a link below of my favorite one. Um, it just makes it easier to measure. And then this is my favorite rolling pin. Again, I'll leave a link below. What I like about this rolling pin is it has these on the ends, which make it really easy to get the appropriate thickness, especially if you have kids like mine that love to help. It doesn't matter how hard they push on it, it will be the perfect thickness. Now, like I said, this recipe is going to make two pie crusts. That means two bottoms and two toppers. Uh, you use a topper if you were making a like cherry pie. Of course, you could make any kind of design you wanted, anything you wanted to do with this recipe, but that's typically how I use it. All right, so I have my dough right here, and I typically just kind of form it into a bowl, ball, and then I'm just going to cut it in half because I only need half of it to make my first pie crust. And I just want a thin layer. I don't need a lot of flour to get this the right consistency to roll out. What I like about this recipe is that it is so easy to work with. And if you mess up, if it gets into the pie plate and it, you know, is uneven or you don't like how it looks, no big deal. You just roll it back up into a ball and re-roll it out. It's so forgiving. It's why I love it as a pie crust that we use for everything. So it's not like you have to be a beginner to make this pie crust, but if you are a beginner, it's such an easy one to start with. It has great flavor. I just can't say enough things. I mean, I usually make the pies for our church small group at Thanksgiving. I love making them. I mean, it's one of those lost arts. I think a lot of people, you know, if you didn't grow up with your mom making pie like my, I did, my mom's an amazing pie maker, you know, it, it feels like this really intimidating recipe to learn. But once you have a great recipe like this one, you feel like a superstar and everyone thinks, wow, you know how to make pie? And the reality is you just needed the right recipe that was easy to use and execute. All right, so what I love about this is it can tell me my appropriate thickness. I don't have to be fancy about rolling it out. I think it's about perfect. All right, now comes the tricky part where we're gonna get it into our pie plate. I'm using a nine inch pie plate. Do not need to butter or flour this because there's plenty of Crisco, as you know, um, in this recipe. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can kind of have it divided into fours and kind of fold it over on itself and then put it in the pie plate and unfold it. I like to kind of fold it over in half and it's one of the reasons I like using the mat. I am gonna make sure I flour the top so it doesn't stick to my rolling pin. And it makes it easy to do this because of the mat. All right. And then I just take my plate like this, right in front of it, Roll it up, that easy. Okay, now, this is a big tip. You do not wanna pull the pie dough into the plate. You want to lift and set it in because you don't want to thin the dough. You want it to be nice and the same thickness as the rest of the outside. Okay, and once I have done that, then I just take my knife, this is not a sharp knife, just a regular knife, and I go around the edge. Now if you find that you've got spots where there's no dough, 
you just patch it, okay? Like I said, this is, this is easy. You know, if you only get half of it in there, just patch it, you know, just make it work. Okay, now you can do different fluting around the outside edge. The easiest one is to take a fork and just press around. I like to do more of like the pinch method. So I just kind of pinch and go around with my finger. This to me is what makes it feel like a homemade pie. And another reason I like this recipe is you don't have to chill the dough. You can make it right away. But because pies are a bit of work, I like to make these ahead of time. I like to freeze them. And then what I do is I just set it on the counter right out of the freezer when I start to make the filling, whether it be a cherry pie or an apple pie. And by the time that my filling is ready uh, is the perfect time to then, you know, add my filling and stick it in the oven. Super easy. All right, so that's what my pie bottom looks like. Oops, I see I just banged it right there. All right, just fix it. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna take this leftover dough and I'm going to re-roll it, roll it out and make my topper. Now you don't need a topper for every recipe. Um, I make a topper for when I'm making my cherry pie, sometimes with apple, but honestly more than not I make a Dutch apple so I don't need um, to have that. But all I need is to roll this back out and I'm trying to kind of make like a six inch in diameter, six or seven inch in diameter circle. And to make the topper super easy, just get anything you have in the house. This is a little lid to one of my canisters. And I use this tool to make it easy and it kind of makes it fancy because it's got that edge. But if you don't have that, just use a knife. No big deal. No big deal. No one is going to care whether you have these fluted edges. They're just gonna be so excited that they have homemade pie. And then to let things vent, I kind of always do a little squiggle. And that's it for the topper. Now to store this, because I'm going to freeze it, um, I'm going to use wax paper, put a piece of wax paper right here, put my topper on top of that, and then really wrap it well in saran wrap, and then a huge Ziploc bag, and I'll stick it in the freezer. If you're using it right away, you can use it right away, just stick it in the refrigerator if you want to, um, but I would freeze it unless you are using it that day, um, just to keep it fresh, because you don't need to let it fall for a long time. So even if you're making pie in like two days, you can freeze it and then get it out. All right, I hope you enjoyed making this pie crust as much as I have with you. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to talk through it with you. I know you can do it. I know you can make this pie crust. There is just something about homemade pie that brings something really special to the dinner table. Whether it's the holidays, a birthday, or just a special evening, I love pie. And I think you will too, especially after trying this recipe. Thanks so much for visiting me at the farmhouse. Until next time. as we make this family, it's my pastry blender. Now I've got my egg, I see, I should have worry about them pressing, what? Uh, measuring, yeah, what is this called? Roll it onto your rolling pin.